You're watching ABC7 Bangor. This is ABC7 News at Noon. Police have arrested a person in connection with a stabbing in Bangor on Tuesday. Good afternoon, I'm Susan Farley. We also have the details on an incident in Blue Hill that ended with police shooting and killing a man. And another manor has been arrested in connection with the January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol. We'll have more on these and other stories coming up. First, let's check in with meteorologist Devin Biggs. Devin? Thank you so much, Susan. And your first weather is brought to you by Luigi and Fredericks across from Eastern Maine Medical Center, serving the greater Bangor area for over 65 years. So another nice and pleasant day out there today. Just a few passing clouds with a couple of showers just to the west of here. So lots of precipitation in Vermont, but here in Bangor we are in the clear but not for long as more chances of drizzle arrive tonight and then once again for tomorrow. So it will be more of a cloudy day out there with some on and off sprinkles the next couple of days. But today, lots of sunshine out there with temperatures a little below average as we'll be hovering in the upper 60s with a south southeast wind at 10 to 15 miles per hour tonight. Another chilly one out there as we'll barely be hovering around that 50 degree mark. Some partly cloudy skies and drizzle will be possible, especially by the morning hours tomorrow. And during the day tomorrow, we warm back up into the 70s with partly cloudy skies once again and more chances of drizzle continue all throughout the day tomorrow. But today, we'll continue to warm up into the upper 60s. Thank you, Conrad. An insurance business in Millinocket is facing fierce backlash after displaying a closure sign related to Juneteenth. Businesses across the nation were closed Monday due to the new federal holiday. Reed Agency in Millinocket displays a closed sign that on the door that read Juneteenth, it's whatever, we're closed. Enjoy your fried chicken and collard greens, end quote. A photo of that sign was shared on multiple platforms, including Facebook, sparking numerous negative comments, calling the sign ignorant and saying shut them down. Millinocket community members say they're outraged after seeing the sign. I would love to see better for this community, and I think a lot of people would like to see better for this community. Um, as a business owner, um, yeah, it's just not something, it's, it's not something you do. It really isn't. It's, you know, all inclusive. It's we're human beings, you know, it, it just wasn't right. The town of Millinocket released a public statement saying in part, quote, it's deeply saddening, disgraceful, and unacceptable for any person, business, or organization to attempt to make light of Juneteenth. There is no place in the town of Millinocket for such a blatant disregard of human decency, end quote. Following the community and social media backlash, the sign was removed from the agency. We reached out to Reed Agency for comment, but did not receive a response. Bangor police have arrested the alleged suspect in a stabbing incident. 31-year-old Stephen Hunt of Bangor has been charged with domestic violence ag elevated aggravated assault. Sergeant Wade Betters of the Bangor Police Department says Tuesday morning officers responded to a call at 101 3rd Street for an alleged assault involving an edged weapon. One person suffered severe injuries from the incident and was rushed to a local hospital. Betters said Hunt had fled the scene prior to officers arriving. According to Betters, the people involved did know each other. One man is dead following an alleged domestic violence incident in Blue Hill early Tuesday morning. Officers with the Maine State Police and the Hancock County Sheriff's Office responded to a residence on Curtis Cove Road around 2.30 a.m. for a report of an injured woman being held against her will. A state police spokesperson says Peter Feister was inside the residence with firearms. As a result of an armed confrontation, Feister was shot and killed outside the residence. The woman was taken to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. The two troopers and the deputy involved in the shooting have been placed on administrative leave as is standard procedure in all deadly force incidents. The Maine Attorney General's office is investigating the cause and manner of the fatal shooting. The bodies of two young people were found inside an Auburn apartment. Investigators are now saying they were killed and are ruling their deaths homicides. 
Police say 21-year-old Kelsey Karen of Auburn and 21-year-old Pierre Lalongwe of Connecticut were both found inside this home late Sunday morning. Police originally responded for a report of a person suffering from cardiac arrest. They're not detailing the cause of both deaths, but they are ruling them homicides. Police have no suspects, but have begun in identifying persons of interest. They're also looking for a 2018 black Hyundai Tucson. We have been working with the Auburn Police Department with this investigation. We've had uh, ERTs, evidence response, techs assigned at that location both Sunday and into Monday. Uh, we're currently following up with uh, leads for people of interest in this investigation. A friend of Kelsey Cameron gave this statement after the mother of two died. She said, quote, she was the hardest worker I have ever met. Her life was her girls. Nothing came before them. She had the sweetest soul and was kind to everyone, end quote. There's a win for religious schools in Maine. The six conservative justices on the Supreme Court ruled against the Maine Department of Education, saying religious schools cannot be excluded from tuition aid for private education. Brad Rogers looks at the reaction and the effect of the court's decision. With no high school in the Bangor suburb of Glenburn, David and Amy Carson's daughter Olivia could have gone to one of six nearby public and private high schools and the town would have paid for it. Just not the religious school. That changes today with this Supreme Court ruling. That is your job as the parent. You're supposed to be in charge of your kid, not the other way, or not the government or the state or anyone else. The separation of church and state has long been debated in Congress and argued in court cases. Expressing disappointment in today's ruling, Maine Attorney General Aaron Fry says religious schools promote a single religion to the exclusion of all others, refuse to admit gay and transgender children, and openly discriminate in hiring teachers and staff. It is disturbing that the Supreme Court found parents have the right to force the public to pay for an education that is fundamentally at odds with values we hold dear. The six conservative members on the U.S. Supreme Court disagree. And this is a fantastic outcome and a fantastic day for parents who simply want the right to choose the schools that are best for their children. Michael Bindis represented the Carsons in another Maine family who sued the state. He says the separation of church and state should not apply when it comes to school choice. This program is not about funding schools. It's about funding families. And it allows parents to make the decision where to use those funds. The Maine Department of Education says it is reviewing the decision for its implications for main schools and will implement the state's tuition program in accordance with the ruling. Olivia is now in college, but her mom says today's decision will help future Maine students who wish to attend religious schools. I'm hopeful that it will help families uh, who live in tuition towns, give them another option. This ruling only applies in Maine communities without a high school where the town covers students' tuition payments. So most religious schools like Chevres would still be excluded from taxpayer money. But it does open the door to that possibility in the future. Coming up on ABC 7 News at noon, some Burson workers are being recognized for their efforts that saved a person's life. We'll be right back. Hello, Maine. This is Steve McKay, and the forecast for the housing market is hot. It's a home buying heat wave with no end in sight. Buyers are looking for your home. Get Luke and get sold with Next Home Experience. If you've been injured and think you can't afford a lawyer, think again. There's absolutely no fee unless we win money for you. I called the twos after I was hurt by a drunk driver. It was free for Lowry and Associates to get started on my case. They got my hospital and surgery bills paid for and got me $250,000. I'm Jim with Lowry and Associates. Call the twos. We win for you. If you're hurt in an accident, what do you do? Call two, 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 22, 22. When Moosehead Trail Home and Heart wants to know the local forecast, they log on to foxbangor.com. Want to help keep your neighbors warm? Moosehead Trail Home and Heart is looking for HVAC technicians. Apply today at Moosehead Trail Home and Heart in Abbott or on our website. Saliba's Rug Cleaners in Bangor is the best and only spot you should go to for your rug cleanings. Serving Maine for more than 70 years, we care about your rugs. Clean rugs last longer, and our family takes pride in being the professionals that you can trust. Our cleaning process consists of soaking your rug in a bath, shampooing, rinsing, and drying in a humidity-controlled dry room, making sure no detail is overlooked. Need a repair? We fully service every type of rug for you. Saliba's Rug Cleaners. We care about your rugs. 
Caswell's Grocery Liquidation, where you shop first. Shop local. Great savings and selection. It's worth the trip. You won't be disappointed. Your dollar goes a long, 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 long way at Caswell's. Looking for your dream home? Contact a next homie today and see what's available right now. Sellers, get ready to get looped and get sold. With Next Home Experience, we have your buyers. On the road, broadcasting the news at 6, live from the Whoopie Pie Festival in Dover Foxcroft, is sponsored by University of Maine Early College, tuition-free online summer courses for high school students, umaine.edu slash early college. At Loyalty Inc., we offer custom artwork, friendly service, a clean, sterile environment, and affordable pricing. Loyalty Inc., our colors never fade and Coop's Truck and Equipment located at 690 Audlin Road, Bangor, specializing in truck and trailer parts and repair. You're watching ABC7 Bangor. The Bangor Region Chamber of Commerce recognized businesses who've made an impact. Stephanie Wittenbach attended Tuesday night ceremony and has the details. The Bangor Region Chamber of Commerce Dinner is held each year to recognize businesses and organizations that have made a positive impact during the year. The last two award dinners were canceled due to the pandemic, but this year the event returned on stage at Maine Savings Amphitheater along the Bangor waterfront. We're so delighted to finally be holding this event again and what we do here is we celebrate and recognize individuals, businesses and organizations that have made significant contributions and positive contributions to the Bangor region. Newman says the highest honor was given to three businesses, Northern Light Health, Penobscot Community Healthcare and St. Joseph Healthcare and they all received the Business of the Year Award. She says the award recognizes their leadership, innovation, and quality. Larry Baker, president and CEO of Machaya Savings Bank, gave comments regarding the ceremony. Over 150 years ago, Machaya Savings Bank was founded to make a difference in our community. So for us, we're a mutual savings bank. It's not about creating shareholder wealth. It's about making a difference in the community. Several hundred people attended Tuesday's dinner event. Newman says attendees were the first to see the new but not yet finished main savings amphitheater. Owner Alex Gray of Waterfront Concert says the venue is about the future of entertainment for Bangor. We have world-class concerts in Bangor, one of the smallest markets in the United States to have this caliber of entertainment in it. It is uh, second to none. As you can see behind me, the main savings amphitheater is nearing uh, first phase completion. In Bangor, I'm Stephanie Wittenbach reporting for ABC7 and Fox 22. A main man was arrested by the FBI Boston Division for his alleged role in the January 6 insurrection at the U.S. Capitol. Special agents and officers joined with the FBI's Joint Terrorism Task Force in Maine, and they arrested 61-year-old Todd Tilly of South Paris on an arrest warrant issued by the United States Court for the District of Columbia. He was taken into custody and charged. Tilly made his initial appearance in U.S. District Court in Portland Tuesday and then released. He's scheduled to appear virtually in U.S. District Court in the District of Columbia on Tuesday, June 28th. The FBI Boston Division alone has now arrested 16 people in connection to the U.S. Capitol riot. The American Red Cross celebrated the heroic efforts of four versant power workers at the University of Maine Orono. Matthew Duroncic has more. Versant Power and the American Red Cross honored four employees for saving the life of a co-worker who suffered from a medical emergency on the job. Cameron Bragg, Steve Sager, Scott Medor, and Danny Morin were awarded with the Red Cross Certificate of Extraordinary Personal Action during Versant's annual safety awards. The incident occurred on February 2nd, just after Versant Power employees wrapped up a CPR AED training the four employees were heading to their location when they found a co-worker face first in a snowbank. In that moment, Sager was shocked, but knew what he had to do. You never think it's going to be that person next to you. I had just sat personally next to the individual for three and a half hours, and then it's, okay, it's, it's go time. We got to do what we got to do. They called 911 and began performing CPR and attaching an AED, which ultimately saved the employee's life. Sager says he is glad that timing is everything. What's the chances of that happening and you having to use it? So it goes to show you that you never know when you're going to need it. Hearing of this heroic event 
American Red Cross director Caroline King was blown away by the demeanor of the four men. It's just absolutely incredible, absolutely incredible to be able to save someone's life based on, on just knowing what to do I mean, and to have the confidence and the calmness to be able to do it. And he's alive today. Despite being called a hero, Sager says he was just doing what he was taught earlier that morning. I don't. I don't feel like a hero, and none of the guys that were there with me do. Um, had it had a different outcome, it would have been a totally different thing. Matthew Jurancic, ABC7, Fox 22. Coming up, do you know what fire ponds are and why they're needed? We'll explain after the break. If you're a Medicare beneficiary and live in the area, Call now to see how this little card could get you some big benefits, including money added back to your Social Security check. With one toll-free call, you can find out how easy it is to get all of your original Medicare coverage, plus extra benefits. You get an all-in-one plan designed to fit your needs so you can be your best every day. You could have medical coverage, prescription drugs with $0 generics, dental, vision and hearing, plus the WellCare Visa Flex Card, money for over-the-counter items, and money back in your Social Security check each month, and so much more. And here's more good news. You can get a WellCare plan for a $0 monthly premium. How can WellCare offer all of those benefits for a $0 monthly premium? It's simple. Medicare Advantage and Medicare Part D prescription drug coverage are important parts of Medicare. WellCare has a contract with Medicare to offer and provide these important options to you. Call right now to get your free copy of the WellCare All-in-One Guide. Call 1-877-282-3827 now. There is absolutely no obligation for requesting this free information. WellCare offers benefits that go beyond the basics, including up to $840 each year added to your Social Security check to help cover your Part B premium. Call today to get your free copy of the All-in-One Guide with absolutely no obligation. Your free plan guide will give you the details you need to make a smart choice for your Medicare coverage. Just call 1-877-282-3827. Remember, there's no obligation for requesting this free information. So call 1-877-282-3827. WellCare. Call today. After my accident, I needed help. I was looking for information online. Then I found it. JoeBornstein.com. Get help now at JoeBornstein.com. From your smartphone or desktop, here in Maine, the law offices of Joe Bornstein is as close as your fingertips. The consultation was free and confidential. In person or online. The firm with the track record of results. If you've been injured in an accident, call Joe. The law offices of Joe Bornstein. Right now. There's a new skincare product manufactured in Maine that stumbled upon a correlation between lobster proteins and repairing skin barriers. Now the product has found a connection to healing brown tail moth rashes. Joe Cortez has the details. Soothing relief from the sea. Marin Skincare is a Maine based company which stumbled upon a major discovery. We're bioengineers that work with lobster scientists at UMaine and discovered that in the same way this protein helps lobsters regenerate claws, it could actually help repair the skin barrier. Their first product launched in 2020 after partnering with Luke's Lobster Pier in Portland. Founders Patrick Breeding and Amber Boudiet found a solution for many who suffer from eczema, psoriasis, and dermatitis. Little did they know their product would open a new discovery involving Maine's widely known brown tail moths. The rash that it causes are actually the brown tail caterpillar furs getting in your skin barrier and causing contact dermatitis. After many reviews and private emails from consumers, the team began its research. And so we finally made this understanding of, oh, it's actually contact dermatitis. So in the same way these proteins found in lobsters were able to help with eczema and dermatitis, it was helping people with the brown tail moth caterpillar rash. Many customers have seen great results and the company has grown 400% over its first year. I think when you have something that really dramatically changes people's lives, they give you a lot of feedback and they come and become invested in the brand and 
Um, fielding that feedback has been really, really important. Maine just had one of its worst brown tail moth seasons this past year, and experts are saying there are signs 2022 could continue a years-long outbreak of the invasive insect. But with all the growth and success Marin has seen in its early days, breeding said while their goal is to become a national and international brand, they have no plans to sell this to Big Pharma and have all the intentions of keeping Maine heritage as the highlight of their business. Our goal is to not create vanity nine-step skincare routines. It's to solve big problems. In Bangor, I'm Joe Cortez for ABC7 and Fox 22. Water is essential when it comes to fighting fires, but what happens when fire trucks run out of water? That's when towns and cities depend on pressure hydrants or even fire protection ponds. As Jody Hersey tells us, Herman has 28 of these fire ponds that crews rely on and help maintain. The town of Herman has just two pressure hydrants in the community, which is why fire ponds like this one behind me are so vital in helping the fire department fight a fire. So fire ponds in the rural setting are how we get fire, uh, water to extinguish fires. Uh, in the town of Herman, we rely on them heavily. Assistant Herman Fire Chief Cody Sullivan says the water used to fight any fire comes off the fire trucks first. And when those trucks run out, crews stop at one of the town's 28 fire ponds to fill back up. With any uh, static water supply that's uh, naturally occurring, uh, sometimes they do dry up. Uh, we have ponds that are better than others. Uh, we do have uh, uh, keep track of what ponds are short on water, and we know that so that we don't rely on that in case there is a fire. Sullivan says some of the fire ponds are maintained by the members of the Herman Fire Department. There is uh, annual maintenance that the fire department does uh, do as far as testing and making sure they're ready to go, preparing them every spring and, uh, and checking them to make sure the flow is adequate. Um, and then there is periodic maintenance where the ponds have to be rehabbed that we uh, put out for uh, third party contractors. Many of the fire ponds in Herman can be found in the town's subdivisions, which require an easement, while others are located on private property. The closer your home is to a fire hydrant, the lower your homeowner's insurance would be. So uh, by allowing us to have a fire pond on their property, typically they would see some sort of reduction in their homeowner's insurance. For safety reasons, the fire department reminds all residents not to access or allow children to play around the Herman fire ponds, just like you would with any other body of water. In Herman, I'm Jody Hersey for ABC7 and Fox 22. Could too much bed rust be a bad thing? With more, here's ABC News' Faith the Boobé. Gatorade, a ginger ale, soup, and a favorite television show is an ideal sick day for many. Especially with the pandemic, sick days have become part of everyday talk. But recent research suggests that too many days in bed could have negative effects on mental health. A study from the University of Iceland looked at 247,249 individuals from six countries and found that individuals who spent seven or more days in bed during a COVID infection were at increased risk of developing depression and trouble sleeping. The study was conducted from February 2020 to August 2021. The patients faced 50 to 60 percent higher prevalence of depressive symptoms and anxiety up to 16 months after infection. It was the first study to look directly at disease severity as a risk factor for mental health in COVID-19. The study did not involve participants from the U.S. With this Medical Minute, I'm Faith Abube, ABC News. When we return, Conrad Sapinski has your five-day forecast. If you've been injured and think you can't afford a lawyer, think again. I never paid Lowry & Associates a penny out of my pocket. They came to the hospital, got my medical bills paid, got me $350,000. We win for you. Dirk Bentley. Beers on Me Tour 2022. June 23rd, Maine Savings Amphitheater, Bangor, Maine. And he's bringing along special guests, Ashley McBride. Let's just stick to the one night and Travis Denning. You know who, and her name is Dirks Bentley, live in concert. On sale now at waterfrontconcerts.com or ticketmaster.com. Part of the Varney Insurance Concert Series. Your favorite restaurants for half off. It's half off dining from Fox 22 and ABC7. Here's this week's featured deal. 
Goose River Farm and Meat Store is conveniently located on Route 3 across from Hammond Lumber in Belfast. They have a wide selection of meat and poultry, including beef, pork, lamb, chicken, duck, rabbit, and turkey. Buy your steak and meats for grilling this summer. On sale Thursday at 9 a.m., a limited supply available half-off dining from Fox 22 and ABC 7. When the Granite Shop wants to know the weather on MDI, they log on to foxbangor.com. At the Granite Shop in Sedgwick and in Trenton, we have more inventory than all other shops in the state combined. Fastest turnaround, too. Looking to haul a new piece of equipment? Homeowners or commercial, Coops Truck and Equipment has the right trailer for you. Coops is the largest dealer of truck flat beds and hauler bodies in this state and can replace any old rusty bed or outfit, any new truck. Our full service facility can modify all truck and trailers with steel and aluminum fabricators on duty. We are your go-to place for CM truck bodies, H&H trailers, and load trail trailers. For trailers, truck bodies, truck outfitting, and more, it's Coops. Sound of Music has returned to the Bangor waterfront. This year marks the Bangor Band's 163rd birthday. The band was back for its first concert of the season Tuesday night. Band members say they're excited to be back in action to kick off the summer season. Good fun, you know, a lot of old-fashioned, sort of bring out your lawn chair, have a great time listening to some great music. Everything from, you know, marches and patriotic collections to newer works, Broadway, showstoppers, that sort of thing. The historic Bangor Band is one of the oldest continuous community bands in the United States and has performed at several venues in Bangor since 1859. Longtime Bangor Band conductor Chip Farnham will be retiring at the end of this summer season. Now let's check your full forecast with Conrad Sapinski. Conrad? Good morning and thank you so much, Susan. Your main weather is brought to you by Scott's Recreation, New England's largest trailer dealer, home of Maine's lowest camper and tractor prices, locations in Turner, Manchester, Herman, and Orono, Maine. All right, so another nice start to the day out there today. Just a few passing clouds, but we are precipitation free out there as most of that precipitation is just to the west and now it's by long island and connecticut so not a big rainmaker at that but all of that is over there so let that be there and we'll take all of that sunshine out here with a little below average temperatures but it is too good to be true because tonight and then once again by tomorrow more clouds and chances of rain arrive here in Bangor. But let's take a look at this temperature trend really warming up by the week and really perfect timing for Saturday into Sunday back into the 80s and then closer to average temperatures by beginning of next week. So finally, those 80s will be back. And with those 80s, the humidity will continue to rise up there. Look at Saturday and Sunday. It will be more on the muggy to humid side before we really start to feel more comfortable by Tuesday as the dew points start to drop out there. But winds, uh, let's talk about the winds out there right now. They are pretty gusty out there, anywhere from 15 to 20 miles per hour out there. And Bangor coming in with a 22 mile per hour wind gust right now. So it is a little bit cooler feeling right now. But luckily for us, the winds will start to dissipate, especially by the afternoon hours tomorrow. But today will be a little bit on the cooler and below average and in the upper 60s with mostly sunny skies. Tonight, another chilly one out there will barely hit 50 degrees and then partly cloudy skies and drizzle starts to move on into our area. Tomorrow, same thing, partly cloudy skies and on and off drizzle will be possible with temperatures in the mid 70s out there. But our five day outlook does show temperatures continue to rise, especially by the weekend as we're back into the 80s. That drizzle will just make us look forward to the sunshine again. That's all for ABC 7 News at noon. Thanks for watching. I'm Susan Farley. We'll see you this evening with Beth Jones and Peter Dubois on ABC 7 News at 6. Have a great afternoon.